Fellow brothers and sisters, greetings to you all in the name of our soon coming Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Inos Mujela, the church elder for Siema Seventh-day Adventist in the Shiloh district. I hope this audio presentation finds you all well and your lights trimmed all bright under the circumstances. I am going to present to you a summary of our quarterly Sabbath school lesson for the week ending 15 May 2020. The heading of the lesson says language, text and context. May I request that we bow our heads as a prayer is offered. Father God in heaven, once more we want to thank you for the advantage and the opportunity to learn more about your weight. Pray in Jesus name. Amen. We will start by looking at the memory text for our lesson study. The memory text is found in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 26. I read it in your hearing. Take this book of the law and place it beside the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. There it will remain as a witness against you. Read from New International Version. Let me leave the memory text for now, as we will come back to it later on and focus on the key concepts. Now we are going to look at language. What is language? Language is said to be the system of communication in speech and in writing used by a particular country or an area. It is expressions and emotions asserted both through verbal and nonverbal cues. Based on the above, it is clear that for one to reach out to a particular group of people or a country, one needs to know, understand, and even to some extent, speak their language. Our lesson teaches us that the Bible as well is language based as God chose to communicate to humanity the history of creation, the fall, the plan of redemption, the promise of restoration and the second coming to the world through the prophets and the writers. This because humanity could not understand the language of God and as such, that would have been a reason enough not to be faithful to his commands and statutes. The Bible so far has been translated into more than 600 languages worldwide from its original Hebrew and Aramaic languages. Argued upon the languages of the world, it therefore suggests that to date 5,400 nations still do not have access to the Bible in their own languages. Think of Kelobedu, and then develop speakers just for starters. Your offering and my offering may prove sufficient if we were to turn the tide. What then is the purpose of the Bible? Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16 and 17, sums it up very nicely when it comes to the purpose of the Bible. It says, all scriptures or the Bible itself is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in all righteousness, which means holistically, mentally, physically, socially, spiritually, and emotionally. The above are based on the fact that man by nature is sinful and needed teaching rebuking, correction, and training in all righteousness, as is the below stated verses. Look at the book of Psalm chapter 51 verse 5 that says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now David here confirms that man by nature is sinful, and needed to be taught, to be rebuked, and to be corrected, as well as to be given training in righteousness. The book of Romans 7 verse 24, Paul says, 
O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul also acknowledges that he is a wretched man and what he needs is deliverance. What he needs is correcting, what he needs is training and righteousness and rebuking too. Further, as in the light of the memory text, the Bible is given in order to bear witness against us that the works of God in history are laid bare before us, his plan of salvation, the redemption of mankind, the restoration of mankind, and the fact that he is coming again. So the Bible bears a testimony. The Bible bears a witness against us. John chapter 15 verse 22 says to us, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin because Christ did come. Christ did make bare before us the God's plan of salvation, God's plan of re redemption and restoration. Christ has made it bare before us that he is also coming soon. So if he did not come before, we would have a reason not to be faithful. But now that he came, the Bible will bear a witness against us. Biblical ways and meanings. As in every language, the Bible is also rich in ways that requires a wide study of their usage so as to understand their broad meaning. For the sake of our study, we'll focus on the following ways as per the lesson, which is mercy and shalom. The word mercy, beyond its direct literal meaning, may also refer to God's love, his loving kindness, the great kindness and the great mercy. You can also read 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 6, Psalms chapter 57 verse 3 and Psalms 143 verse 8. Another word is the word shalom, also beyond its literal meaning, which is peace. The word shalom may mean wholeness, completeness, well-being or tranquility. Now our lesson, it teaches us that shalom is a gift from God. And it's only communion with God that provides the ultimate and wholeness that our lives desire. The other aspect of our lesson is about repetition, word patterns and meaning. As indicated earlier, that the original language of the Bible was Hebrew. In Hebrew thought, there are a number of ways to express ideas that reinforce meaning and emphasize importance of concepts. It is said that one of the ways a Hebrew writer could emphasize certain attributes of God was by repeating. Let us, for this reason, consider Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Moses, who is said to be the writer of the first five books of the, of the Bible, repeated the word created threefold. The main crux was to emphasize the fact that human beings are created by God and by God only. And for more on this subject, you may as well consider Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, and Daniel chapter 3, the whole book. Text and context. It takes into account the situation and environment wherein the word or a sentence was constructed. Text and context, according to the lesson, helps us to avoid instances wherein, as Bible readers, we may come into erroneous interpretations. An example is given of the man Adam. In Hebrew, the name Adam refers to man or humanity as a whole, both male and female, and not exactly the Adam of Genesis 2 verse 7, who in this regard is referred to as Adama with an H. Now, 
most religions of today, they have been swept over simply by inability to discern text and context as applied in the Bible. And that is where ministers of religion just pick up a weight in the Bible and would want to formulate a doctrinal position, which in terms of text and context, people are losing the word of God and its meaning. Books and their messages. Now, as in every literature, the books of the Bible too were written for different purposes and in different backgrounds. As indicated in our lesson, we have prophetic books, we have compilations, we have letters, and we have historical books. Now for prophetic books, like you have the major and the minor prophets, they were written to warn the people of God or the Israelites against the impending danger if they disobeyed God and prospects of success for faithfulness. They were also written to narrate the history of God's intervention in times past. Look at the letters, mostly the letters written by the missionary Paul, which are also referred to as Pauline letters. Paul writes many letters to the churches in Asia. The basis for or the purpose for the letters mostly were written for encouragement and exhortation to fellow believers. They were written in other aspects to rebuke inappropriate and unbecoming behaviors amongst brethren. Also some of the letters that Paul wrote, their purpose was to challenge the status quo. Same applies to historical books that were written for imparting culture and tradition, the role of kings and kingships, and the whole book of Psalm is full of praises and thanksgiving to God, which may be categorized as compilations. Brothers and sisters, like as I said, I'm going to present to you a summary. I would want to conclude my presentation and say, it is my view that when we read the Bible, which is the sure word of God, we need not read it just like any other history or science book but we need to read it prayerfully with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It is then that most of God's mysteries hidden in this treasure will then be unlocked and will be wiser and be filled with all wisdom. Thank you for listening and I'm wishing you all a blessed Sabbath of the Lord. Amen.